On Tuesday, a Baltimore City Council committee unanimously voted to advance a proposed ban on styrofoam food containers. All right. Costello votes yes. Clark? Yes. Pinkett? Yes. Reisinger? Yes. Scott? Stokes? Yes. Bullock? Yes. But the timeline for implementation was drastically changed. It was amended from 90 days to 18 months. And this was part of a, a, a great deal of, of work and, and compromise uh, and, frankly, leadership on Council President Young and Councilman Bullock's uh, part. Student activists with the group Baltimore Beyond Plastic said they support this amendment. Instead of an impediment, we see this bill as an opportunity to create an equitable transition away from foam products. Over the past weeks, our team has done extensive surveying of Baltimore small food businesses, and based on our conversations with business owners, we believe that a longer timeline is necessary to allow all of Baltimore's businesses to find alternative packaging that meets their needs. And in an email, environmental advocacy group Blue Water Baltimore told The Real News, while a shorter implementation time would be preferable, we're still supportive of this bill with a longer implementation time. Next week, the council committee will also introduce two more amendments. The first will eliminate the possibility of jail time for infringement, and the second will make allowances for grocery stores to use styrofoam trays and containers and exempt prepackaged food distributors from the ban. Uh, but we have a uh, uh, meat uh, and seafood distributor located on the east side of Baltimore City uh, that this bill would impact, and I think that is an unintended uh, consequence of, of this bill. Students from Mount Royal Elementary and Federal Hill Prep were present. Committee Chair Eric Costello explained to them that grocery store styrofoam should be exempt because it doesn't add to litter. Well, the chances are that's probably not going to end up in the garb or in the harbor. Baltimore Beyond Plastics say they recognize this concession as practical. It would be difficult to enforce a ban on food that is often prepackaged outside of Baltimore before being sold within the city. Although this packaging still comprises a portion of Baltimore's foam litter, it is critical that we promote an enforceable and feasible bill that will not overburden Baltimore's businesses. The full city council will vote on the ban next Tuesday. At the state level, Baltimore Delegate Brooke Learman and Montgomery County Delegate Cheryl Kagan have introduced a bill to phase out styrofoam across Maryland. Styrofoam has already been phased out in Prince George's County and Montgomery County, as well as in Washington, D.C., if the ban were to be passed in Baltimore, more than 50% of Maryland residents will live in jurisdictions where a ban is in effect, including other areas such as Montgomery County and Prince George's County. This statistic would have enormous implications for the state ban's prospects and would show our state legislators that shifting away from foam is possible. And Blue Water Baltimore said the amendments that were discussed would make the Baltimore bill consistent with Montgomery County and other jurisdictions in Maryland. If the state-level bill passed, it would likely supersede the city bill. Here's our in-depth report on the bill from last week. I want to ban styrofoam for the environment and for us. As Baltimore's underheated and underfunded public schools are capturing headlines, a group of city students are leading a fight for a new law to curb pollution, a ban on styrofoam food containers. We're going to work so hard together to get polystyrene out of Baltimore. Just ahead of a city council hearing to consider the bill, student group Baltimore Beyond Plastic held a rally to demand action. We've worked on the issue of phasing out uh, expanded polystyrene for a couple of years, and we've been working with the students who have really been rallying behind this cause. We are trying to ban styrofoam because it causes chemicals in your food, and it's also like if you put it inside the river or anything, it could pollute it, it could um, kill fishes or any important living creatures. This all comes just after Baltimore City Public Schools made the switch from styrofoam to compostable lunch trays. At the hearing, City Council President Jack Young said he too was supporting the bill. It was some kids that really, really um, got, to, got to me in a, in a very good way. And many kids testified at the hearing. Styrofoam products can be replaced, but our environment and our world can't. Students across the city have consistently shown that we want no demand to see this bill pass. The bill's chief sponsor, Councilman John Bullock, said he's optimistic that the bill will pass. There were seven co-sponsors for it. Um, I've talked to some of the members of the committee, the council uh, uh, president as well, and so I do believe that we're going to get this uh, passed. Bullock and others say styrofoam has negative health and environmental impacts. We look at the fact that it's not biodegradable, so it just sits in landfills forever. But at the hearing, some package industry and retail representatives questioned the bill's efficacy. 
we agree with protecting Marylanders from potentially harmful products, but there simply are not facts to support the proponents' arguments that polystyrene is harmful. Bans on products, including foam, uh, don't solve the litter problem. Some business owners opposed the bill and expressed concerns about the costs it would pose. Just for me uh, to use a paper cup or a plastic cup will cost about $5,000 more a year. And uh, we can't absorb that cost. But other business owners and food representatives showed their support. We have 115 signatures of businesses who support this ban. We have like 77 restaurants who are in the city of Baltimore who have sent support letters. We're writing or speaking in support of this bill, um, phasing out the expanded use of polystyrene. And though Baltimore does have a program to recycle styrofoam takeout containers. Foam is recyclable. We've done it in Baltimore City at the Sisson Street plant with DPW for years. It's not a part of the regular recycling stream. It's downgraded and actually ca causes DART to lose money um, by re recycling them because it, they have to package them up and ship them up to Pennsylvania, I believe, and shred them down and they become like picture frames. Um, so you can't really use them for like food anymore. And after that, you just have to throw them away. Instead, the foam often ends up in incinerators. You talk about incineration. Nothing burns better or faster or hotter than polystyrene. Over 57 known volatile chemicals are released into the air when styrofoam is incinerated, which makes it a critical public health concern because we breathe that air. And as students, um, our lungs are developing, so it's particularly harmful to us. The bill would pose a $1,000 fine on any food service facilities that don't comply. We're not interested in fining local businesses. We're really interested in making the change. Unfortunately, sometimes legislation needs to include fines to promote the behavior that we really want to see. Some asked that the ban be expanded to better serve the city's most vulnerable populations. If it's possible to clarify that social service organizations, child care centers, nursing facilities, hospitals, detention facilities, and schools are not exempt, the council committee didn't hold a vote at the hearing. Instead, committee chair, Councilman Eric Costello, announced a follow-up meeting next week to hear amendment proposals. For The Real News with Taylor Hebden, Darna Noor, Baltimore.